so hi everyone this is jay your instructor for computer networks and in this session we are going to discuss the most important protocol in the application layer which is dns so the full form of the dns is the domain name system the domain name system is a distributed database which is implemented in hierarchy of many name servers it is an application layer protocol and it translates the addresses so for example if you are accessing the amazon website and for that you are typing www.amazon.com so in the internet each and every device is, is having unique ip address now imagine if you have to remember ip address of every site or every device you want to access so that would be so much difficult right so we cannot understand and we cannot remember that many number that is the capacity of human so that is why uh, we are using one system which maps the ip address with the name of the website so when you are typing the www.amazon.com your browser knows that the amazon.com is having the ip address for example 9.2.3.4 so it will send request to that particular website so dns is responsible for that if the dns system would not exist the whole internet would collapsed because without the dns we are not able to access we won't be able to access this many websites so what happens when your browser doesn't know the ip address of the particular website for example if you are typing www.xyz.com and your browser doesn't know that what is the ip address of the www.xyz.com so in that case your browser will generate the query it will first see in its own operating system device in which the browser is running the browser will see in the operating system that whether the ip address is present or not if it is not present then the browser will generate query and it will ask some servers so there are specific servers are there which are responsible for dns query they will solve the dns queries and we are going to see that how the dns queries are solved so the dns provide different services the more importantly the dns maps the ip address with the website name so the question is why we don't centralize the dns okay there is a possibility that we can generate a simple let's say notepad like file and in that there will be the ip addresses and there will be the website names and that file will be stored in our computer so that would be possible and actually that was the technique that was used because at that time there were very few websites available and very few ip addresses were there but right now the internet is having billion ip addresses and billion websites or more than that so in that case if your computer stores the file the size of the file would be very large again if you consider today's situation we can download the large file so it means that it is not that problematic right but that is not the only problem the size is not the only problem the another problem is that every website is changing their ip addresses and we are not aware that which website has changed its ip address some popular websites are having fixed ip address but some are changing so the rate of changing is very quickly so if the in that case we cannot download the file at for example every minute and we can update that file that is very inconvenient right so that is why we need the domain name system so why we not use the centralized dns that we just discussed that 
if the it is the possibility of the single point of failure like if our device is not working or if one particular server is not working which contain all the information about all the computers all the website and all the ip addresses in that server so if all the information is stored in the particular server and if the if that server is not working so in that case no one can access the website then it will increase traffic also if we provide the centralized dns now why we not use the centralized dns what is centralized dns centralized dns means that in the internet there will be only one device or one server which will handle all the requests for the dns it means that it will store the file which contains the ip address which contains the website and that file will be updated and all the information will be shared from the other device and the server very frequently so what are the disadvantage of that so in that case if that server is not working so if that server is not working it means that no device in the internet can access the website because nobody is remembering the ip address again the traffic will be increased because there is only one centralized device so all the devices has to reach to one particular device to access any website so it will just increase the traffic and it would increase the maintenance too because we have to keep the server working 24 by 7 and we have to use very modern and fast processors for that server because in the normal dns queries are 600 billions per day so it is not very efficient right so that is why the dns is used decentralized queries we are going to see that how it uses the decentralized queries so the dns is totally distributed and hierarchical so in the top there is a root servers after that there are top level domain servers and after that there is a authoritative servers so if you are typing for example www.amazon.com so after dot com there is a dot and that dot at the last represent the root dns servers so the actual website is www.google.com and dot so dot is a root dns after the dot server there is a top level domain server for example dot com dot org dot edu dot gov etc after that there are authoritative server and those servers are for particular website or for particular purpose only for example amazon.com yahoo.com then pbs.org then oxford.com oxford then oxford.edu then stanford.edu etc so what are the top level domain servers they are responsible for .com, .org, these are the examples, .net, .edu, etc. It also includes the country level domains such as .cn, .uk, .ca, .jp, etc. For education base, there are .edu. Then authoritative DNS servers, these servers are organizations on servers providing the authoritative host name to ip mapping for organizations name hosts and local name servers which are also called as default name server so when your computer is not knowing the ip address of the particular website it will first reach to its own local server which can be at your university or at your company or at your internet service provider for example you want to access the www.xyz.com and your computer doesn't know it in that case it will generate query and query will be sent to the local server of your internet service provider so there are different type of uh, methods using which the domain name system resolves a query so there are two types the first is known as the iterated query you can see that there are different servers are there root dns server then there is a tld dns server then there is authoritative dns server 
suppose you want to access any engineering website and your computer doesn't know the ip address so it will send the request to the local dns server which is uh, residing near to your house and which is use which is provided by your internet service provider so your computer send the request now if the server of the internet service provider knows the ip address of the request so it can reply with that ip address but if that server doesn't know so it will first reach to the root server so it will first reach to the root server that uh, can you tell me what is the ip address of the engineering.nyu.edu so root server generally don't know the ip address but root server will provide the information to the local server by which local server can reach to the top level domain server so it will reply with the message that okay i don't know the ip address of your query but i know that from where you can get the ip address for your query so the local server receives the uh, message from the root server then after it uh, reach to the next server which are the top level domain server now which top level domain it is going to ask it is going to ask the top level domain server dot edu it will reach to the edu again there is a possibility that top level domain server knows the ip address of the query if the top level domain server doesn't know the ip address of the query in that case okay i don't know the ip address but i know from where you can get the ip address so it will reply the message that for the next time to which server it has to reach so again the local server will receive the message from the top level domain server and it will reach to the authoritative dns server and from the authoritative dns server it will know the ip address of the website and it will send to your browser your browser will receive the ip address of the query it will store into its memory and again you can access the website and you can set you can see that website in the browser so this is how the iterated query works in the second type the local server won't solve your query uh, for you but it will ask the query to all the servers for example you want to access the website the request will be sent to the local server now local server will forward that request it will not resolve your query but it will forward your query to the root server if root server doesn't know then it will forward the query to the tld server because root server knows that which tld server could know the ip address of the query if the tld server knows the ip address then it will forward the message if tld server doesn't know then tld server knows that to which server it can forward the query then it will forward the query the authoritative dns server knows the ip address so it will reply the ip address to the tld tld replies the ip address to the root server and root server will reply the ip address to the local server and local server will reply the ip address to you and your browser will save that ip address for that particular website this is the message which is generated by the dns protocol and you can see that there are different identification message flags there are questions different answers and the length of one field is four bytes and total there are seven fields so this is it for the dns protocol message and if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much